Merry meet, enchanted ones. Welcome to my witchy corner. Today we will explore some witchy garden tips that will help you cultivate a bountiful and magical garden. From calming lavender to protective rosemary, we're going to delve into the magical properties and uses of various herbs and plants, casting a little spell in the garden. And of course, we'll also illuminate the celestial art of lunar and astrological gardening. If you're a witch who likes to grow and use plants, there are so many ways you can use them in your magic and personal practice. So first, let's begin with a few basics that I always recommend. Do a blessing for your garden with symbolic action and by stating your intention for your garden and all that it produces. Perform a dedication ritual and dedicate your garden or plant ingredients to a specific deity or spirit or even a purpose. You can, of course, use all of the herbs and plants that you produce in potions, charms, infusions, or other types of magical work. You can use them to decorate your altar, and you can even make tending your garden a part of your personal witchcraft practice. So watering your garden can become cleansing your space, and composting and fertilizing can become a sacred offering. Another handy tip is to use a pendulum in the garden. This plant I thought was going to die, and it came back. Lavender is known for its calming properties, so it's great for love and luck to encourage sweet dreams, add it to a bath. This one here is rue. So this is a very powerful and protective herb with purifying properties. It can ward off evil influences when planted around your home, and it's useful in hex breaking and curse lifting spells. Rosemary is next on our list. It's a powerful plant with protective qualities. So it's great to burn dried rosemary to cleanse your space or to plant it near your home's entrance to safeguard your sanctuary. It's super versatile and it's great for memory so I like to use it for dream work as well. Dill is very magical. It carries protection, love, and communication. Add it to a charm bag or scatter it near your front door to promote harmonious interactions with your neighbors. So parsley carries the energies of abundance and health. Any leafy green like arugula, kale, lettuce also will do this and plant it in your witchy garden to manifest prosperity and vitality. Basil is beloved for its love and abundance energy, so it can be added to meals for kitchen witchery to help strengthen relationships or carried in a charm bag to attract wealth. Sage is a staple in any witch's garden with properties of wisdom, purification, and protection. It's great in any kinds of protective or cleansing magic. Oregano is known for its magical properties of happiness, love, and protection. You can scatter oregano leaves around your home or incorporate them into charm bags. Chamomile has such a sunny disposition. It's said to bring prosperity, luck, tranquility, or for anything that you're going to do with business. You can brew a calming tea or sprinkle the dried flowers around your home to welcome abundance and peace. Bay leaves known for their wisdom and protective properties can be burned to seek guidance or used in a charm bag to shield yourself from harm. They are also regularly used in wishing spells. Roses represent love, passion, and healing. Use rose petals in love spells or add them to a bath for a healing magical experience. Poppies symbolize fertility and abundance and they can be planted to encourage growth and creativity. The seeds can be used in spells and rituals for manifesting dreams and desires. Thyme is an herb associated with courage, strength, and protection, and it's often used in cooking for kitchen witch spells. Mint is an herb associated with healing, protection, and prosperity. It's often used in teas and spells. Lemon balm is great for nerves and calming the nerves, and it helps to balance um, emotions and feelings. And borage, also known as bees bread, or blue star flower, is a versatile and enchanting herb that is known for its magical properties. It imparts courage, um, it uplifts the spirit, it's steeped in folklore. So this blue starred wonder is said to enhance psychic abilities and promote harmony in one's surroundings. So you can even hear the bees, they just absolutely love it here. Mugwort is a must-have for any witch. It helps with dreams, with um, psychic ability, visions. It's really great when you're doing spirit work. It smells amazing too. And lastly, we have yarrow. It's super versatile. It helps with healing, courage, and love energies. Use it in spells to promote self-love or carry it with you for protection and bravery. I also really like this one for spiritual connection and ancestral connection as well.
Let's talk about gardening by the moon. This involves aligning your planting and gardening activities with the lunar phases and astrological signs. So here are some basic guidelines that I follow. The new moon to first quarter, known as the waxing crescent, is a good time for planting above ground crops with external seeds such as lettuce, spinach, and cabbage. The moon's gravitational pull is increasing, which encourages seed germination. The first quarter to the full moon, this is the phase ideal for planting above ground crops with internal seeds like beans, tomatoes, and peppers, and the moon's energy is strong, promoting the growth. From the full moon to the third quarter, known as the waning gibbous, focus on planting root crops, bulbs, and perennials, such as potatoes, onions, and garlic. The moon's gravitational pull decreases, encouraging root development. From the third quarter to the new moon, also known as the waning crescent. This is a resting period for the garden, so it's an excellent time to pull any unwanted plants, prune, mow, and harvest. The moon's energy is at its lowest, which helps prevent excessive sap flow in plants. The astrological signs also play a role in lunar gardening. Water signs such as Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. These signs are considered the most fertile and are great for planting and irrigation. Earth signs like Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn are moderately fertile and suitable for planting root crops and sturdy plants. Air signs are barren, so it's best to focus on cultivating, pulling weeds or unwanted plants, pest control, and things like that during this time. Fire signs are the most barren, making them suitable for weeding, pruning, and harvesting as well, but avoid planting. Hopefully with these witchy garden tips and a touch of magic and intention, your garden will flourish with radiant energies. Blessed be!